Sunday brings us Fast Lane, the last stop on the road to WrestleMania 35. Even though we have several more weeks of Raws and SmackDowns and house shows still to go. But because this is a pay-per-view, it's on the network. This is the last stop. Whatever. You know, I wish the WWE would have said stop and not done this show. One pay-per-view between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania? Cool. I get it. Use that as a chance to set up, to reset, do a bunch of different things. But when you get two of them in between... You're just trying to fill time and fill that time with content and you're forcing things. You're just doing kind of random crap in some cases. And, you know, personally, personally, I would have rather been able to fill this four hours coming up on Sunday night with my own time, doing my own things. But nonetheless, I'll be watching and then reviewing Yip, yip, skip. All right, so Fast Lane 2019. What are we looking at? Kickoff show. You got a couple of matches announced. You got Rey Mysterio versus Andrade because ultimately, according to Vince, when a new Mexican comes into the fold, he's got to wrestle an old Mexican like Rey Mysterio. See the ADR formula. Whatever. Who cares? The New Day versus Rusev and Shinsuke. Honestly, again, who cares? Like, you look at it and you say, these are most certainly kickoff show matches. I was looking and I'm like, there's no Cruiserweight title match even on the kickoff show? That's how little the Cruiserweights matter at this point? I don't know. Actually, you looked at a couple of these matches on the card and they really truly feel like they also could be on the kickoff show. Which again is an indication that maybe this one show is one show too many between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. I mean, when you really look at this, how many of these matches feel like they belong on a regular main pay-per-view card? Especially the last pay-per-view before the Big Daddy. Maybe a couple? At most. But that's the kickoff show. In terms of the main card, we've got the SmackDown Women's Championship, Mandy Rose versus Asuka. And, oh, I, I guess... This is a perfect example of you had Asuka lose to Charlotte at WrestleMania, and frankly, her character's never been the same. You haven't known how to use her, you haven't used her well, and all you end up with is a meaningless filler women's champion. That's it. I care less about this match, I care less whether Asuka retains and goes into Mania the champ. I could care less if couldn't care less if Mandy Rose. Wins this belt. Who cares? Because when you look at it, with all the effort they put on that Raw Women's Championship, this company clearly doesn't give a shit about the SmackDown one at this point. And I can't blame them. The Raw Tag Team Championship Triple Threat match. Another match that feels like it really belongs on a kickoff show. You've got Aleister Black and Ricochet. And, and help me understand why these guys are tag teaming. What about them and those two specifically together makes you think that they are a wise choice to be a tag team? Feels like an odd situation of the company wanted to bring the guys up, but they didn't have any plans of what the fuck to do with them, so they throw them into the abyss that is now the Raw Tag Team Division. Really weird to me. Taking on Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, I did not even really realize that this was still a thing. Shame. And the Champs The Revival. A lot of you thought, I guess, that I would be into these guys. They seem lame as fuck to me. I'm just being real with you. I couldn't care about this match at all. And I don't care about this match. What strikes me more is that it's odd that Aleister Black and Ricochet are tag teaming with each other than anything else about it. Again, just like SmackDown Women's Championship, you could have, A, put this on the kickoff show, would have hurt my feelings one bit, or B, not had these matches at all, and saved everybody about an hour worth of time, which probably, in the grand scheme of things, would have been everybody wanted. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Probably not. The SmackDown Tag Team Championship, Miz and Shane O'Mac taking on the Usos. You know, this match will be solid, I'm sure, and maybe this is where we get the split off for Miz and Shane, and they go on to have their match at WrestleMania. 
and I am here for that. That's cool. It's a sad state of affairs, though, when your 40-something executive in the company, Shane McMahon, is one of the most over people that you have and is one of the people most likely to actually be able to entertain the fans and not one of your more regular talents. It's an indictment as much as anything on the WWE of today. The WWE Women's Tag Team Championship because, yes, we do so many great and awesome things with the women all up and down the roster, and you have so many of them that now, because you needed one more belt, you create another belt. Ugh. Nia Jax and Tamina take it on the boss and hug connection. Like, again, Bailey and Sasha is still a fucking thing. Feels like I've been bitching about it for over a year because I probably have been, and yet, and still, it's still a thing, and it won't die. And if this match is the way to bubble something to the surface to where it can die RIP once and for all at WrestleMania, then all the better for it. A six-man tag match featuring The Shield. They're back together. Oh, baby, how awesome is this? Couldn't even wait a month to have Roman make his first match. She got thrown right back into the fold. And, of course, while you still have Dean Ambrose, you got to go down the nostalgia path once again with the damn Shield. Whatever. You, we all know how this is going. And Team Clusterfuck, and that's what I call them. Like Baron Corbin, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley. What the fuck is this? The hell is this? I I'm good. We all know how this is going to go down. We all know how this is going to happen. So does it really matter? No. They're going to let Roman win and he'll get the shine. And now uh, we'll slowly get right back into doing shit the same way we always used to. Instead of taking a real opportunity that has been provided by unfortunate circumstances to really do something special. Oh, what do you know? That's WWE for it. The WWE Championship, Kevin Owens versus Daniel Bryan. It was kind of weird that this was kind of thrown in out of nowhere. You're thinking it's Kofi, and then all of a sudden it's Kevin Owens, and I'm for it. And I'm assuming this probably leads to a triple threat, throwing Kofi in at WrestleMania, and again, I'm all for it. Will Kofi get involved in this match? Maybe. Will the New Day get involved in this match? Perhaps. Again, I'm here for it. And maybe in the process, these two guys can have a decent match to give me a little shot of adrenaline that I need late in the night. And then you get the main event, which is Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Fair. Now, will this match go on last? I don't know. But is this really the one match on this card that actually has real substance and matters? Yes. You know, I guess I'm still kind of confused. I know now it's about if Becky wins, she gets her opportunity at Rousey and the Raw Women's Champion at WrestleMania 2. Which, again, is just kind of one of these stupid things that WWE does. They book themselves into a corner, put themselves in a bag, and then they try to rip out of the bag. And you basically invalidate the Rumble result just to come back and a month later pretend like it never happened. It just This is where we get to the unnecessary stupidity of the WWE. And when I look at what's been going on on social media, in particular the last week plus between Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch, I love it. I'm loving every single fucking minute of it. And then, of course, as is naturally the case, you're just kind of shoehorning Charlotte Flair in to try and force her in like she's interesting and she's just not. Now, certainly Charlotte is probably involved in this whole thing, perhaps to be the one that does the honor at WrestleMania, making it kind of a weak moment. But nonetheless, I digress. You would assume at this point in time you have two results. You have Becky Lynch win clean over Charlotte Flair, or B, you have Ronda Rousey come in and fuck this match up with no clear decision. That at least gives you a little bit to talk about on television the next couple of weeks. Or C, cool would it be to have Becky Lynch fucking lose, get screwed, and build up that nervous worry and anticipation amongst her fan base about whether or not she's even going to be in the match at WrestleMania. Number one is the easy method, the likely method. Number two is possible. Number three would be the most compelling, but I'll settle for number two. Let's have Ronda Rousey come out, fuck Charlotte Flair up so that way, or fuck Becky Lynch up so that way she technically wins via DQ, fuck up Charlotte Flair too, and then you're off to the races with your God-blessed, incessant, triple threat match at WrestleMania.
We can do that. Okay, that's fine. I look at the show, though. It, it looks like Sunday night is going to be a long, boring night. There will probably be a couple of matches that provide a little bit of satisfactory value. But this is not a card that screams out that you're going to remember much of anything about it, even three months from now, let alone 12 months from now. The only thing that's really aggravating about this is that this show feels like this is unnecessary and it's going to be four fucking hours. Seriously, WWE, when you have a show like this, respect your fans, respect their time, and get this shit in three hours or less. If you can't do that, then reality is you just don't need to do this damn show. And honestly, at this point, if this company didn't do this show... Do any of you feel like you would be missing absolutely anything at all? Anything. That's what I thought. 